Welcome to the Lead Gen Leaders Podcast, connecting you to the leading minds in home improvement to discuss all things marketing and leadership. And now, your host, Kyle Powers. Welcome to the Lead Gen Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Powers, and I have an awesome guest for the listeners today. He is a member of the National Speakers Association, and he has quickly rose to the top of the personal development industry. His passion lies in coaching both people personally and professionally on topics such as attitude, goal setting, work-life balance, sales, and leadership. He is currently the founder and CEO of the Winning Minds Group, and he's a certified speaker, trainer, and coach with the John Maxwell team. I was blessed to have him as a personal coach for a while, and I'm sure you are going to get a lot of great advice on growth and leadership today. I'd like to welcome to the show, Matt De La Cruz. Hello, Matt. Hey, Kyle. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you today? I am blessed. I'm highly favored. What a beautiful, beautiful way to start 2021. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Hey, uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Super excited to have you on the show and, and introduce you uh, to my listeners. Uh, but before we really get into you know the episode and, and discussing you know personal growth and leadership and, and things like that, uh, could you give a little background to the listeners? You know who you are, where you've come from. Yeah, sure. You know it's it's interesting that you say that. But just uh, any interview I do, I'm doing a lot of podcasts right now. But even back. Prior before COVID, I was doing a lot of radio interviews and TV interviews, and as I was traveling across the country and promoting events, and people always used to say, you know, how did you start out? Or some people even heard my story, and they used to say that they used to feel sorry for how I grew up. And, you know, I grew up in California, Orange County, Huntington Beach, surfer, beach bum, raised in obscurity by one of the most negative men in the world, happening my father, who was an alcoholic, a physical abuser, verbal abuser. And at the ripe age of 17, I remember it vividly because I woke up that morning and he said, uh, today you're an adult, pack your stuff and get the hell out of the house. And I looked at him and saying, well, where do you expect me to go? He says, that's not my problem. So I packed up what I owned at the time. My assets were my surfboard, of course, sleeping bag, my clothes. And I got my 1960 Volkswagen. I drove to the beach and I lived on the beach and slept under the pier in Huntington Beach, California did that for about 14 months and uh, back then it was cool because we were called beach bums today we call them homeless people (laughs) and needless to say um you know as i go through the interviews and i tell my story people used to say well i felt so bad for you about growing up and i said you know why would you feel bad about me growing up the way i grew up and they go wow because you were homeless you you didn't you know you dropped out of high school at 17 you didn't finish school and boy I, i just felt so bad for you i said you know, that's one way of taking it. I could have played the victim, but I chose to play the victor. And they go, well, what was so positive about it? I said, think about it. I'm 17 years of age. I have beachfront property. I pay no taxes. <laughs> I'm unemployed, so I pay no income taxes. I wasn't married, had no relationships. I didn't have to worry about kids or a spouse. Um, I got to do what I love to do every single day, and that was surf three or four times a day and drink beer and smoke pot. I mean, can it get any easier than that? I was free. And they always say to me, they said, wow, I've never looked at it that way. I said, most of us aren't programmed that way, but my upbringing got me to see the good and everything versus the negative. So we all go through that life, Kyle. We play the victim or we play the victor. And that's how I started out. And then great fortune came my way, and I met uh, the first man that changed my life was Zig Ziglar. He taught me about goal setting, taught me about attitude. Then Tom Hopkins comes into my life, and he's the one that taught me how to sell. And then Jim Rohn comes into my life shortly after that, taught me about personal development. And he taught me about the quote that you always use. He said that the formal education will get you a job, but the self-education will make you a fortune. And I've always hung on to that my whole life. But that was about how I grew up. It wasn't anything glamorous, but it was definitely an experience. All right. And uh, so a lot of similarities in, in both of our lives growing up and, and absolutely hit the nail on the head there with the quote about, uh, you know, formal education. Yeah, it'll make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. And, and I've said that quite a few times on the show because uh, I really believe in that, you know, continued growth The saying, you know, uh, when you're green, you're growing. When you're ripe, you're rotten. You know, you got to continue to grow at, at every level. And, and so meeting those uh, people and, and learning from your mentors that you had, uh, let's talk about where you're at now. Uh, you currently own a company called the Winning Mind, uh, Winning Mind Group. Can you 
uh, speak to the listeners about that a little bit. So years ago, you know, when I founded the company um, 28 years ago, um, I was great. I had the great fortune before I even started my company that um, because I promoted seminars, I promoted Zig Ziglar seminars all over the country, Tom Hopkins seminars all over the country and Jim Rohn seminars all over the country. And so when you used to go to these, if you ever saw a live event with a major speaker, like the three that I represented, uh, it was promoters like me that filled up the room and I would fly into a city and I'd fill it up. And then as I started realizing it in my future with this company that I realized that my products were people. And unfortunately my products, because they were people, either they were going to pass on or they were going to retire eventually. And of course, that's what happened to Zig, and that's what happened to Jim Rohn. And Tom Hopkins, who's still alive, he actually retired back in 2014. But I knew that if I could ride their coattails, that I could build a brand off of these teachers and mentors of mine. That I wanted to be the I wanted to be the person that carry on the legacies of their teachings. And that was one of the things they always said to me. They said, you know, one thing about what you do, Matt, is you you live what we teach, and this is why you promote our company, and this is why you promote ourselves. And uh, to this day, when people ask me, what is the difference between you and any other speaker, trainer, and coach out there? And I say, what I teach is how I live, and how I live is what I teach. That's what's unique about what I do in my value proposition. So, again, you can't teach what you do not know, and you cannot give what you do not possess. And that's when I founded the company, The Winning Minds Group, where I coach individuals. I mean, people that are just ordinary tell the way to billionaires. I work with multi-million dollar companies to Fortune 5 companies uh, where I go in and teach them either leadership, sales, or personal development, the things that I was taught over the years. Now, it's my, it's my job to, to carry on the legacy of what my teachers taught me with, with my own life experience and my twist on how I do it. And that's how I teach it. That's the Winning Minds group. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. I uh, you know, fully believe and it's the same thing at our uh, you know, coaching and consulting firm is that uh, you know, living what you teach. And that's you know, one of the things that separates us also is you know, when we come into a business and, and work with the client, uh, you know, we're out in the field generating the leads uh, you know, with people, showing them how to do it, you know, not just sharing theory, so to say, with them. These are tried and proven, and, and we live that you know, to every company that we're at. And uh, you know, like with Tony in his own company, you know, everything that we consult out to and, and teach on is, is things that you know, we improve on and continue to work on inside of his own retail business. So uh, it's good to hear that. Uh, and that is a major separator because I think, uh, especially, I mean, with COVID and stuff, I mean, there's a lot of people you see online nowadays that are coaches and consultants. And, uh, you know, I'd have to venture on to say that a lot of them uh, don't really have the experience nor live what they teach. They just found a way to, you know, hopefully sell themselves in, in, into making some money. So uh, I know I had you as a personal coach for a while, and that's what really drew me to you is, you know, you're not really teaching me a theory. You're teaching me your life, what you live, you know, and what, what made you successful. Yes, for sure. That's, and that's what makes the difference of it. And I always tell people, they say, well, can you coach me for a month? I said, well, you know, it's 66 days to go through what we call the cycle of transformation. And, you know, you have 40 years of bad habits. It's going to take more than 30 days to change that, let alone the 66 days just to go through the cycle of transformation, which a lot of people don't understand. And once you learn that, then you can change anything and change any any behavior you have once you learn and understand what that cycle of transformation is. Yeah, let's, uh, that brings up a good point, the cycle of transformation. Could you maybe touch on that just a little bit, uh, of what that is? Sure. So figure what, what we do that we do through without even thinking about it. It's, we, we go through these habits or an ingrained behavior. It's a pattern of repetition. But like, for example, if you wanted to, most people that start the New Year's off, you'll see that some people still talk about their New Year's resolution, which tells you a lot about that person, especially if they're using that term, New Year's resolution. Or they talk about the people, the people that have their clearly defined goals for their 2021. And I always tell people, I said, in order for you to go from where you are to a new identity, in other words, if you don't eat right and exercise consistently because that's not your identity – and you're not into nutrition, you're not into exercise, then we have to set that goal is the habit of eating healthy food and exercising daily. You're going to have to go through that cycle of transformation and it's a 66-day commitment. And when I say 66-day commitment, that means you go 
66 straight days. This includes weekends and holidays. <laughs> and the day, that, if you go 40 days and you miss, you got to start all over again. But you go for the first part called inception. Inception is the part where you want to, you love to start things. This is where people start the New Year's resolution. They're excited about it. New year. They don't have a new you, but they have a new year and they expect to have different results. It's not going to happen. So they're going to have the, the same old them into this new year, the same thinking process, the same philosophy about everything. And then they're going to go through this and then they'll start this diet. They'll join a gym, even though you can't really join a gym right now, it's kind of waste of money right now, but they start this. And then all of a sudden it lasts for about 48 hours, sometimes a week, if you're fortunate. And then you go back to the old way you are. Cause then your brain says, I want to start, but then it goes, it's not that easy. I'm going to go back to where I was. And you've, once you can get through that first part of inception to get to the second part called um, deception, which is called self-sabotage, this is where the brain is saying, you don't need to do this. You don't need to get up early to go to the gym. You don't need to eat good foods. You're not overweight. This is a self-sabotage. And you'll even start saying things to yourself saying, you're not overweight. Just tell people you have big bones. Tell everybody in the family. Everyone has big bones. That's why you're overweight, but you're not really overweight because it's big bones. So we go from inception to deception. In about 30 days, you get to that curve called the transformation turn. And this is the part of you that wants to stick with it. So when you put your clothes on after 30 days, because you're eating right and exercise for 30 straight days, all of a sudden your clothes feel a little bit looser. And then you go to work or you see someone sees you and they say, oh gosh, you look great, Kyle. You lost some weight. Are you on a diet? What are you doing? You look good right now. You lost some weight. And that's what gets you to stick with it. Because now you only have 36 more days to get to the new identity, so to speak. And then all of a sudden, once you get to that 66 days, it now becomes an ingrained behavior. So you eat right and exercise. You don't have to set a goal to do it anymore. Why? Because it's your identity. You eat right and exercise every single day. It's the same thing with your paycheck. It's the same thing with spending quality time with your family. Everything in life, in order for you to go from who you are to what you want to be, you got to go through that 66-day cycle of transformation. And I get, when I coach people, I get them to understand that because once you understand that, you'll know when you're in deception, you know how to push through and break through that, that fight of self-sabotage because that's what hurts most of us is we talk ourselves out of it instead of talking ourselves into it. There's the difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd venture to say that's the same in business too when you look at adding a new marketing source or cha- trying to change the culture in your business and do something different that, you know, it, it goes similarly to those same stages, I would have to say. Yeah, oh, there's no doubt about it. People hate change. They, I mean, humans don't like change. We like to live in the comfort zone. That's why we have the biggest middle class in any country in the world. In fact, we're the only country still left that exists that has a middle class. I mean, the other countries are rich or you're poor, but when you get to the middle class and, and you get to that average part, you're comfortable. They're making enough money just to pay the bills. They're making enough money just to survive. And we've all gone through that before, but that's what happens. Yep, and I was uh, just having a conversation uh, with uh, somebody the other day and said, hey, everything you want in life lies just outside your comfort zone. It was actually a, a class of high schoolers. Uh, I was able to present to a few of them uh, about our industry, the home and modeling industry, and you know what jobs are available in our industry that, that aren't swinging the hammer, that aren't the building aspect. And so they were opened up to a whole new world of, of sales and marketing. Um, and you know that's what I told them. I said, hey, you know, as you, as you grow and go, just know that everything you want is just outside that comfort zone. And if you're willing to get uncomfortable, life can get really great. Yep. In fact, Maslow says that we either step into growth or we step back into comfort, right? And life begins outside our comfort zone. And that's where most of us get stuck. We get stuck right there. So we have a middle class. All right. So that was a great conversation uh, on the, on the 66 days there. Uh, great point for the listeners at tackling anything in life. Uh, what's kind of the next step in, you know, personal growth and development? Cause I'm a firm believer that, before you can lead and grow others, you have to kind of get to that point in your life, you know, that you have that information to share, uh, like you said, living it, right? Um, and so, you know, someone that is maybe looking to uh, become a leader, you know, in business, whether it's, you know, leading a team of, you know, five or 10 canvassers all the way up to, you know, owning their own home improvement business and, and growing it to be like some of the giants with hundreds and maybe even thousands of employees. What's kind of that, that first steps in, in self-growth? You know, when, when you talk about growth, it's let's look about it. the the title doesn't make the leader. The leader makes the title. 
And because so many years that a company has, the, the infrastructure of a company has always been the old style of, quote, management, even though they called it leadership. And some people will still refer to their people as managers and not leaders. And you can tell by saying, let me see your business card. And it says sales manager, event manager. Why doesn't it say sales leader or, or event leader? How come it doesn't say anything in the leadership part? Because there's a huge difference between managing and leading. So many of the companies that I go in with, I work with um, Fortune 5 companies, uh, Cisco Foods all over the country uh, in Wisconsin as well. And it's interesting because a lot of them are, they, they still manage their people and they get certain results because the manager, what they'll do, the difference between leaders and managers is that leaders have people follow them while managers have people who work for them. And they're always managers are managing activity and they're managing numbers. But a successful business owner, they need to be both a strong leader and a manager to get their team on board to follow, but, you know, follow them towards whatever their vision of success is. So when we identify that, we go into growing as a person first. In other words, if you don't have your life together, why would I follow you? If we were to label scale it down and rate somebody on as a leader of a scale one to 10, in my leadership ability, my leadership skills is a nine or an eight, and you're a six or a seven, why would I follow a six and seven? I would never follow a six or seven. In other words, if you're going to be talking to me in the home improvement part about Event, event managing, or let's just say even canvassing. Yet, if you were paid, put in the position as a manager, but yet you never canvassed, you couldn't show me. So, in other words, I wouldn't follow you because you couldn't show me. You haven't been in the weeds yet. You haven't been in the, in the trenches. But when a leader does get into that position, they get the respect that they need because then they can show me how to do it. And many of us, especially the people that are listening right now, we all work for somebody that was a manager and we had to follow them because we had to simply because they were titled a manager. But it all goes back to everybody that's listening right now, there are four levels of growth that we got to go through. And we go from survival, and we've all been through survival part. And if you're going to be a business owner, you're going to have to start at the bottom in order to open up a home improvement company, open up any company. But you got to go from survival, then you go to stability. And then stability is where people, this is the tricky part, because people get, we talk about comfortable. People get comfortable at the stability part. We learn to live to be stable. We know what to do to get by. And then we go from um, stability to success. Success is a level that everyone's striving to get, but yet until you really sit down and define what success is to you, then you never know if you'll arrive at it. And then many of us and many of the people that are listening right now to the podcast right now, you might be at a level of success, maybe in the business side, but you're not a, a, a level of success in your family life. I mean, I know people who own home improvement companies they do great in the business, but they have a terrible relationship with their kids and their wife or their spouse. But then we see the people who also do great and they're successful in their business, but they fail in health. So when we look at a, a, a core leader, you should be successful. As we are, If I was to follow you and I was to get respect of a person that's going to – I want to work with, I want to follow, I want to make sure that they have their life together. I want to make sure they are successful at spiritual, family, career, financial, social, mental health. I, I want to make sure that this person isn't grinding away and working 80 hours a week. I don't want to be like that. I want to teach someone to say, I get the job done in 20 hours versus 80 hours because why would, why would I want to be like that where I can't enjoy my family or my kids? So we go from those levels from survival to stability, stability to success, and then we go from success to significance. It's a level that a lot of people never, ever get to. They're not even aware of what significance is because significance is a part of your life where all of a sudden now you don't – it's not about money. It's not about possession. It's not about title. It's about caring and helping other people, making a difference in the world, making a difference in the company. And that's when you go from being selfish on your journey to success to come at becoming selfless. And now it's about everything else. It's not about you. And most people never, ever, ever get to that level. So that's what we got to grow on. When I talk to people and I work with coaching people, when I coach at companies and I work with their leadership, I find out and identify where they are, find out where they want to go. And the first thing we do is we develop the leader within. And we go through six months of training. We don't even talk leadership. We talk about the person. I got to help you become the best person you can become. Because when I can help you become the best person you can become, now we can put a title there. Now we have a great leader. Because in many cases, we've got a lot of people that are screwed up, and we gave them a title of a, of a leader. Now we have a screwed-up leader that's leading our team. 
And so when I, people see the shift and how I do it, the paradigm shift of it, and they go through it and they say, now I get it. So it's not a, you know, it's not even 11 week Dale Carnegie leadership part, which half the people don't even go through it. I'm talking about living this stuff. And so when people that want to be a good leader, you got to become a good person first. You got to have a person that lives in balance first. And that's the difference of it. That's one of the things that we do differently from anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. And you and you brought up uh, balance and you spoke about like the wheel of life in there that uh, I know when I came to you for personal coaching, I did it for business reasons. I wanted my business to get better. And um, when you uh, brought that up to me about the wheel of life and, and had me look at everything, you know, we realized that I had other goals uh, in, in other aspects of my life and how they all needed to align. Uh, you know, for instance, if, if one of my goals is to, uh, spend a lot more time with my family and kids, but my other goal is to work really hard right now at my business to get to this level, you know, they conflict. Uh, and so could you bring up, uh, those points that you said in the, in the wheel of life and, and why it's so important to be in balance, uh, with all of those and not just really good at any one of those. Right. And and that's, that's where people, people do good at your foot. When you're focused more hours on your career instead of the other areas in your life, then you're just making a living. But when you're focused on all the other areas of your life, you're designing a lifestyle. Anyone can work, but I want to enjoy my life. And I'm sure most of the people on this on this podcast said, hey, you know what? I, hey, I paid my dues. I went through like everybody else did. Hey, I had a company for years that I didn't get a paycheck. Everyone got paid with me. But I hung in there, and I'm telling you, once you do that, then you get to you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. But if there's no fruit because you're not building a strong enough a trunk and that goes into the ground and the roots are down and you don't have the branches, it's not going to bear fruit. So that's why it's about people. People grow the business. The owner doesn't grow the business. The people do. And you know that where you used to work at. Mm-hmm. Companies, people I talk to right now that are – they become they've had this entrepreneur. They can do it on their own because the owners never took care of the people that got them to where they are today. I see it all over the place, and it's sad. It's not about the owners, the people. The people grow the business, and so you help your people become the best people they can become. It's not about the employee-employer relationship. It's about do you have a personal relationship with these people? Do you know them as people? That's what a leader does. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. That's what happens. And I go into these companies, and I don't interview the leaders. I interview the people and ask the people, the people. I said, tell me about your leader. Oh, I hate the guy. Yeah, you find out real quick. (laughs) Yeah, exactly what happens. Yeah, some of the uh, best companies that I know, in, and when I say best companies, not necessarily the biggest companies, but usually the most profitable companies uh, I know in our business right now are companies where leadership and ownership spend a lot of time on developing the people beneath them, not just in business. They spend time on finances. They spend time on health. Uh, and they, you know, spend time on family. They don't want you there 80 some hours a week. They, they want you to be able to do it, you know, and have that balance, uh, with everything. And so that goes right along with that wheel of life. And when that's perfectly in balance, uh, you know, you, life is good, as you say. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, that's exactly right. You know, I, one of the quotes I love by John Nash, he says that leadership doesn't happen in the day. Leadership happens daily. And so when we go in to work with these companies, and they want, they want help on leadership, and they say, well, how long is it going to take? I said, about six months. And they go, six months? Can't you get it done sooner? And I said, well, that's what you've done in the past. You've taken these people, you give them a title, and you stick them in the microwave, and you hit 30 seconds. And in 30 seconds, you think you have a leader. What we do to create leadership is we put them, we put them, in, we put them in a crock pot, and we let them marinate for six months. So what would you rather have? leaders that have been marinated for six months and learning the skills and knowing how to treat people, or do you want to stick someone in the microwave? So every 30 days you're replacing that person. There's the difference of it. And uh, Matt, what would you recommend to the listeners that, um, you know, let's, let's talk about that listener that's, that's looking to grow um, and maybe some books, some resources uh, to get them started. You know, what are some of your favorites? You know, uh, Peter Drucker was one of my 
all time favorites. And he was he was the manager guru. Uh, John Maxwell even learned from him. Zig learned from him. Jim Rohn learned from them. You know, a lot of people learn from Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker wrote a lot of books on management. And then when John Maxwell, who is obviously one of my favorite, I've, I've been certified speaker, trainer, coach for John Maxwell now for six years. Um, I wanted to plug into that brand and that name because of what he teaches. And he's written, he's written and authored 100 books. Not very many people that are still alive today, but have written 100 books. But his claim to fame and one of, his, one of my favorite books that I teach out of is the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He teaches the 21 laws of, of leadership, and this is from Chick-fil-A to Delta Airlines to Google to, um, you know, Quicken Loans. I mean, I do a lot of the leadership training for some of these companies, but the 21 laws is the key where every leader and every manager on those teams, they're in sync with that. So I recommend 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell, that's the first book I started with. That's what people through 15 weeks of that to go through and learn the 15 laws from law number one, the law of intentionality, to the law of contribution, which is law 15. And it's all synced in line to get these people to learn what we teach them, to live it, and then they have the right to teach it. So that's our concept, our philosophy in teaching. We learn it, we live it, and we teach it. We learn it, we live it, we teach it. Because you can't teach it if you don't live it. Because I'm the first person that will look at you and say, you don't live it. And that's how I learned. If you're living it and you're doing better than me, then I'll pay attention to you. But if you're not doing better than me and you're not living it, why would I listen to you? Right. And that's kind of the concept of how I learned. So, I mean, there was a lot of good books out there that you could just go through. And I just tell you, listen, just go to John Maxwell, High Global to Leadership, you know, Leadership uh, develop, leadership Development 2.0. There's all different types of, just go to John Maxwell. If you Google leadership, John Maxwell is the number one thing that comes up. So in today's way of teaching, it's the way it is. And for all your listeners out there too, like John says, every teacher that teaches leadership or management, everything was straight from the Bible, no matter what you say. And that's one of the things I love about what John teaches because he's a man of God and he teaches the leadership principles that are spot on. It's big stuff. Yeah, absolutely. John Maxwell is definitely, uh, I've quoted him many times on the show, you know, my favorites in, in, I would say a good majority of the books that I have are his, uh, certainly have all of those. I was very lucky, uh, in his group to get, uh, the leadership 2.0, you know, autographed from him and, and noted to me and stuff. So, uh, certainly great books and great recommendations there. Uh, also, you know, the five levels of leadership, you know, you had brought that up, uh, you know, position only essentially that manager that, Hey, I'm your boss. Uh, and you know, you, you have to listen because, because I'm your boss. I, that, that's my title. And uh, right. to, to learn, I mean, that opened me up so much when I learned that that is the initial level, that is level one, and you don't get that level for very long. You have to uh, engage and get into the next levels to continue to grow and, and become that great leader that has a great team. Uh, could you maybe touch on that a little bit? Sure. So it's one of the things that's the basis that I start with. And then I go in there, I have to analyze these companies. I got a new client, I have to go in there. It's a medical company, and I'm going in on it. And I started a 10 week program with them. And the first thing we do is um, a program that I had written. It's called Unleash the Leader Within. And so I want to find out what the leadership skills are. But I usually find out based on are they managing their people or are they leading their people? It's the first thing I distinguish. And then I go through and I'll pick, and there's six leaders in this particular group that I'm talking about from the president all the way down to the VP of sales. And so I ask them about you know, how many people they're leading. And then I always ask that, I'll ask them to open the table with the whole group. And then everyone will say themselves, and I say, okay, so that how many people you lead? And then some people will say, um, I think I manage four, maybe six. And I'll say, well, how many kids do you have? And they say two. I said, are you sure? So you, only, you don't know if you manage or lead four or six. You're used to split. So what bothers me is if you don't know if it's four or six, then that means you're losing two. What if you're the shepherd and you lose two of your sheep? I mean, it's the same thing in leadership, right? Right. So it helps you determine, are they at level one? And I ask them, I go, let's go through the people that you lead, and you write down with them, and I'll take them to the level. Level one is position. They follow you because they have to. They hate you and despise you, but they follow you because they have to. You're the boss. Level two is permission, right? Relationship. They follow you because they want to. And they have some type of relationship with you. Level three is 
production result. It's all because of what you've done for the organization, which is a key point where have you been in the trenches? Can you, have you done this before? You're trying to tell me what to do. Have you show me how to do it? And then level four is the goal is to get everybody up to level four, which is called people development reproduction. People follow you because of what they've done, what you've done for them. And what that comes into play is, so I give every single one of the people that work on my team the wheel of life. And the same thing I take with clients, like, go through the wheel of life, let's rate yourself on a scale one to 10, go through those seven, let's find out where you are, take the four levels of growth, let's find out where you are, because each leader needs to know where their people are. If I'm leading seven people and seven of my people that I'm leading are in survival mode for some reason, and I need to help them get out of it. But if I look at the wheel of life, I can shift point right there. Here's where they're in survival because they have a bad relationship with their family, or they're in a bad relationship with their marriage, or financially, they're financially invested because they have so much debt. And as a leader, I'm going to help them if they want me to help them get out of debt. I'll give them a book called Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey and say, here's how I did it. Here's how I did it. Let me show you if you want me to. So people now follow me because of what I've done for them. I've got a better debt. I've got the relationships in the family that right? I got their health back on track. So I helped them as the person. So the end result to get to level number five, which is called the pinnacle, the top of the top, the heap of the heap, or also known as respect, they fall in because of who you are and what you represent. So if we can get 70 to 80%, all of you, the managers, owners out there, leaders, whatever, if you can get 70 to 80% of your people to follow you because of level four, then you're doing awesome. And when you get to level number five, you never claim you're at level five. Your people will declare you at level five. That's when you're not at level five. But my goal is to get people to go from level one to level four. And when someone first hires on that are level one, now your goal is to get them to level four. But if you have 10 people that you lead and lead right now, and you only have, let's just say, one person at level four, everyone else is between one, two, and three, you got to bring people up. In order for you to go up, you got to grow up, and you got to grow your people up. Absolutely, and I think yeah, and I think you know for our industry on the home remodeling, home services specifically, when we're talking on you know, that entry level side marketing, you know, call center, face-to-face marketing canvassers, um, and, you know, going up from there at sales and that type of stuff that when you grow as that leader, uh, and you get into that level four and five and you're pouring into your people. And like I said, some of the most profitable companies I know right now help their employees with that entire wheel of life. And when you help them figure out their life, turnover rates go down drastically in your business. Your culture goes up through the roof and people don't leave, you know, for another dollar an hour because they can't get fed all the other stuff that you're giving them at their business and making their, their life better. They might be able to go make another dollar or two or a little bit more money. Uh, but at what cost? Um, and, and so those are all really, really great points, Matt, uh, on everything that you've brought so far today. I, I'm sure we could talk <laughs> for days and, and hours because I, I just love the stuff that you bring and, and was thankful to have you as a coach for a while myself. Um, sure. And that kind of brings us to the last uh, you know, part of the episode here, uh, Power's Powerful Point. What powerful point do you have for the listeners today? So re- remember that, and, this, and I always close with something to the point to where people always ask me, what do I do? And I always say, if you did what I did, like from the minute I woke up to the minute I went to bed, I can guarantee if you did what I did, I would up-level your life. And the question is, is if I did what you did from the minute you woke up to the minute you went to bed, could you up-level my life? That is the question. And people say, well, what do you do? And I say, I look at every day as a game. And I put myself in state say, hey, today's not just Monday. Today's just another day or another game. So I'm going to play the trainer of 65 in my 2021 season, and I'm going to play every single day to win. And they said, well, how do you do that? I said, because in my mindset, I choose to dominate the day instead of accommodating the day. And there's four things I do. Number one, I play to win. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to win. I'm going to play to win. Why? Because there's an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset. The second thing is I refuse to lose. If I have to make 20 calls that day and it's 8 o'clock at night, I haven't made that 20th call, I'm going to make that 20th call. If I'm at 9,000 steps, 9,500, and it's 10 o'clock at night, I'm walking that time. I refuse to lose. I'm going to hit my mark. I'm going to hit 10,000 steps. 
So number one, play to win. Number two, refuse to lose. Number three, always be hungry. If there's anything you want to watch, you can YouTube Les Brown, Be Hungry. It's one of my favorite. It was one of the first talks he ever did. You've got to be hungry. And so when you get, if you're not hungry, then you're complacent and you're content. And everyone's passing you by. And the last point that I make every single day, and this is how I dominate today, I live today as if the last. You don't know if you have tomorrow. You don't even know if you have February 1. If you go with a mindset and you get into that state of mind, when you play the win, you refuse to lose, you're hungry all the time, and you live today as if you last, I will guarantee you no one will get in your way, and you will dominate today because most of us are just accommodating the day. Telling you makes all the difference in the world. That's my point is for your people. That's awesome, Matt. Thank you so much uh, for that. And, and something that, you know, I think I had you as my coach five years ago, four years ago, probably. Um, and that is something that is still carried with me today on uh, that, you know, each day is a game. You got 365 games a year. Um, and, and I share that with some of the people that, uh, you know, that I mentor in, in, in coach and training, you know, just on the, on the work aspect and the, the lead generation side is, Hey, when you go home tonight and you ask yourself, did you win or lose today? You know, just be honest with yourself. If you can get honest with yourself first, you know, you don't have to share that with anybody, but if your answer was, well, I lost today. Okay. Well, why did you lose? What do you got to change tomorrow? So you can win, you know, at the end of the year, are you going to be, you know, a losing team? Are you going to be a 500 team? Or are you going to be a championship team? And, uh, and yep, so right that's, on. that's something that's really stuck with me. So I, I really thank you for that. Uh, I thank you for your time today, Matt, if someone, uh, in the audience is interested in getting a hold of you about coaching, uh, in the things that you do with leadership and growth, how might they get a hold of you? They can just go to my website. It's winningminds.com. Um, or they can shoot me an email if they want to Matt at winningminds.com. The one thing I'll leave all your listeners is that I do this thing called Mondays with Matt, Kyle. I don't know if you're still a subscriber to it. But, Watch it every Monday. Um, every Monday I do a little thing called Mondays with Matt, and it's a way to kick off the week. And I started doing it four years ago, and I had people just said, I love the message. It gave me a great way to start off uh, the week. So if you go to my website and it says sign me up for Mondays with Matt, it's free. It's a three- to five-minute video just to kind of start off the week. I do it every single week. I record it. And put it on as a new message to inspire you to get you to that link. So any one of your listeners can go ahead and do that. That's my gift to them. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. And uh, yeah, Mondays with Matt, something I still uh, listen to uh, mostly every Monday. Um, and also, if you're having trouble finding uh, Matt uh, with that, you can always reach out you know, to me through TonyHody.com, uh, and I can get uh, you in touch with that also. So again, Matt, look forward to probably having you on the show again. As, as always, you got sure. so much content and uh, so much value to add uh, to whoever may be listening to you. So I thank you for having you on the show today. You're welcome, buddy. Hey, just hey, uh, safe, safe, uh, safe new year for you and your family and all your listeners on that. Let's make 2021 the greatest year ever. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Thank you for listening to the Lead Gen Leaders Podcast. For a free consultation on how Tony Hody Training and Consulting can assist with your home remodeling business, please visit TonyHody.com. That's T-O-N-Y-H-O-T-Y dot com. Thank you for listening.